Hi, I'm Lee Gatiss and today we're going to be looking at the readings from the lectionary for Year C and the week known as Proper 14. And those readings are Isaiah chapter 1 verses 10 to 20, Hebrews chapter 11 verses 1 to 16, and Luke chapter 12 verses 32 to 40. You will find it helpful to have read through those before we continue with the rest of the video. This Sunday we hear three challenging angles on the future for God's people. Isaiah is our Old Testament reading for the next two weeks. His vision is addressed to the people of Judah, but in particular to their capital city, Jerusalem. It is something of a jolt, then, for him to address this major faith capital as Sodom and Gomorrah in verse 10. The people of faith have become as evil as those infamously degraded cities. As a result, their worship is empty and loathsome. Perhaps not to them, it probably feels lavish and spectacular and appropriately dignified to them, but it doesn't look that way to the God it is meant to be focused on. Though many in our culture may think that God should be happy with them, whatever he can, well, he should be happy with whatever he can get these days, the truth is he hides his eyes and closes his ears to those who only want to engage him superficially. The Sabbath performance is not sufficient. He hates the religious mask that covers the pagan heart. Yet even to hypocrites the offer of forgiveness is open. Their scarlet sins can be like snow. But repentance is not cheap and Isaiah declares that only the willing and obedient will eat the good of the land and avoid the impending doom. A word to Judah as the Assyrian comes down like a wolf on the fold to devour their near neighbour, Assyria, uh, Israel rather. A word to other cities too and other churches which have become indistinguishable from Gomorrah and as inhospitable for the faithful as Sodom. Will repentance be forthcoming? Will it be in time? The city that's in view in Hebrews 11 is a far better place to hope for, with firmer foundations by far. Abraham knew it only by faith, a stranger in a foreign land most of his life. With little earthly future, it seems, but with the promise of God in his pocket all the way. His distant homeland was a heavenly country prepared for God, for which it is worth forsaking the comforts of this life and the familiar desires of an earthbound existence. Too often we are ashamed to admit our attachment to Jesus in a world that despises his name and pours scorn on his ways. But the issue in Hebrews chapter 11 verse 16 is whether God will be ashamed to stand by his covenant with us, not the other way around. Note that he is proud to own those who speak and act in this world as those who have their desires fixed elsewhere. Hebrews only has warnings for those whose sights are considerably lower. It is this perspective that we hear again from the lips of the Lord himself in Luke chapter 12. The father delights to give the kingdom to his fearful little flock. With that reassurance and hope in place, we are free to be extreme in our generosity in this life. Remembering the Church of England's Article 38, the only place in the 39 articles where we are encouraged to be liberal. Those whose bank statements show that they live on the edge of eternity and not just for the here and now will find, don't miss this surprise in verse 37, those people will find that the Lord Jesus himself 
will be happy to serve them in the feast that is to come. If that is not a humbling, almost shocking, but deeply beautiful thought for us, well, our bank managers will know it. And we are worryingly ill-prepared for the hour that is approaching. <laughs>